Okay, boxing fans, I'm going to do a quick prediction for Carson Jones versus Kell Brook, the rematch. Uh, I understand that a lot of people enjoy bashing Kell Brook on a lot of things he's done, but for the next say, 10 15 minutes, let's just talk about the actual fight and throw the rest of that shit in the ocean because we're just going to talk about the fight for now. Uh, this fight is actually at a catch weight, you know, uh, it suits Kell Brook that, in my opinion. You know, he won't have to drain himself down excessively to make the weight. It will help his body performance in terms of moving up weight to 154, which his team are suggesting is going to happen. Uh, it won't take its toll significantly on his body, unlike some other people that we've seen like two weeks ago. Adrian Broner jumping up drastically, weight limits, you know, took his toll on his body, didn't adapt very well, and basically he fought shit, in my opinion. He didn't. Big money on Broner, but. Big money on Broner, I had, but yeah, he. He barely won that fight, in my opinion. He barely won it. Moving on, back to Kell Brook. Big 147-pound fighter, tight at the weight. It's logical that he moves up now, because 147 pounds is pretty much dead for Kell Brook. You know, in other words, in terms of fighting for the WBC, you're looking at fighting Floyd. He's not going to fight Floyd. In terms of fighting for the IBF, you have to be pretty much... The IBF's the only title you could pretty much go for, really. I mean... And he pulled out of that fight. There's no point going to the w WBO because that's a top rank belt. And the WBA right now is held by Adrian Broner, which means it's going to be a cherry pick. Anyway, everyone will be cherry picked. So it makes sense to move up to 154. Looking at the catch weight, it definitely suits Kell Brook. Uh, conditioning, unfortunately, it's not good news for Carson Jones. I was talking to Errol Jarrett, and he was. Um, Ages ago, he, he told me to add a load of the boxes on Facebook, so I did. And one of them was Carson Jones, and pretty much ever since then, he has posted pictures of his dinner on Facebook. And it's not good quality food. I mean, we're, we're talking about stuff that consists of KFC, big burgers and fries. You know, not stuff that any self-respecting athlete is going to be putting into their body while in training. So I asked him, I did ask him on Facebook, why are you eating this when you've got, you know, why are you eating KFC when you've got a fight coming up? And he was going, made a few excuses, called me judgmental, and some shit like that, you know what I mean? I was going, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's how it was. And I was like, you know, I didn't really respond to anything he said because it just wasn't, there was no need. Because how many athletes do you see that eat in, in fast food joints? You know, Floyd aside because he's in a league of his own, not even Adrian Broner can mimic what he does and look good doing it because in his last fight like I pointed out he barely beat Paulie Malinacci when he was supposed to coast him he was supposed to be a coaster and he and he really he barely got through that fight barely won that fight in my opinion you know burgers, fries, KFC you ain't supposed to be eating that if you're an athlete uh, names in, you know the clues in the name you know fries fried shit just not right um, when was the last time you saw Messi in McDonald's, Rafa Nadal in KFC, Mo Farah in Burger King, or even Bradley Wiggins in Pete's Hut? It doesn't happen. Only in boxing will this happen where an athlete like Carson Jones, you know, has pretty much no self respect and eats, you know, awful quality food to train on. It's just not it's not good. I mean uh, nutrition is everything to athletes. When you eat fast food and low quality food you increase your susceptibility to injury and you reduce your your body immune system so you have issues fighting infections and diseases examples would be like you know Ademek, no not Ademek sorry Chris Ariola for Ademek and was susceptible to injury in that fight got it, I think he broke something and he also did the same in the Stivern fight he's not a good at professional Ariola he does drink in training and he also eats bad quality food in training and that's why uh, oddly near Solis had the same 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 thing really you know crap food trains hard on it goes into his biggest fight of his life with a shattered knee basically just did not work out for him Carson Jones himself pulled out of the fight with Lee Perty with an illness showing his he has issues with his immune system when in theory you know athletes should have a greater immune system than the average Joe because of the quality of food that they go in and how quick and how well their body performs. 
but that wasn't the case with him so you know something to think about also let's use me as, as an example because I'm not a professional athlete but I do train four out of seven days a week you know and I do different things you know I was working out with a person trainer when we were both doing our steroid cycle and he was living a life I wasn't living a life to the fullest uh, I did drink once out of my cycle because it's a friend's birthday and we would you know you know how it is right and the quality of food I, I was eating was not great quality food sometimes it was good other times it was uh, not so good I do like I'm a sucker for the chicken wings sucker for the deli counter after work or something so yeah you know it wasn't going too well for me in terms of the diet but I was still losing weight due to the steroids and stuff however going into like a few weeks of the cycle I was doing big weights I mean real big weights like double it was more double what I would usually do you know naturally and I tore a muscle in my back and my friend was doing the same weights as me and he was fine I mean it was, it was all down to the nutrition at the end of the day I ended up going to do an athletics to an athletic center and training there with another guy and once again I was fine while I was you know keeping the diet thing going once I, I strayed from the diet from the dietitian you know I tore a calf muscle so I sidelined again for a month so every time that I've not kept to a strict diet I've been you know injured and sidelined in which you know you put you, you put you out of weight because you can't train as much as you want to you know you lose muscle mass in certain places because you can't train as much as you want to and other thing other things strength decreases and you just feel lethargic and stuff so I don't like that stuff but that's how I felt anyway moving on from that you know once I got myself back on track with the diet and stuff I was dropping weight quite quickly and I was in I'm in good shape now anyway I'm in real good shape 13 stone about 8% body fat uh, like I said I'm doing quite well I've not been injured in nine months since you know I've sorted out my diet so that's another thing that should really highlight where Carson Jones is going wrong and the greatest thing that I have decided on about the whole thing was when me and Carson Jones were beating like you know crap quality food like he is now and I was then right he is training to fail and not to win and that's how I was I was training to fail and get injured because I was pushing myself to the max and my muscles couldn't take it because of the low, the low quality crap in my body so it's inevitable that he's going to lose this fight one way or another he's going to lose this fight or he'll get injured so sooner or later or you know he's going to get injured maybe I don't know if this fight happens then that's great but if he if he pulls out like a day before the fight I wouldn't be surprised um, moving on from that you know I've worked out Carson Jones and his whole style but basically because he eats low quality crap he can only fi he, he can only fight half a fight because his stamina is suffering because of it he started extremely slow against Kell Brook you know uh, allowed Kell Brook luckily to blow himself out because Kell Brook also had awful nutrition in that fight but the point being he cannot f yeah, fight 12 rounds Kell Brook now can he fight 12 rounds well with great nutrition I say he can fight longer than Carson Jones can and the fact that it's at a catch weight that suits him I say he can now fight even longer than Carson Jones can you see what I'm saying so if you look at a recent fight the Dean Bain fight Carson Jones was forced to fight the full fight and he wasn't very good at it he barely got out of that fight with anything it ended a draw but he didn't deserve it he did not deserve it and Dean Bain's not a not a brilliant fighter he's not world class he's not aspiring to be world class domestic fighter you understand I mean let's look at you know his opponent Kell Brook he fought awful in the first fight with bad nutrition you know but he still beat Carson Jones now Carson Jones in the biggest fight of his, of his, of his life basically is still on bad nutrition while Kell has moved on and has got a nutrition team experts to help him out so there will be a notable difference something I just think that we should think about you know moving on from that every time that something oh yeah someone else said to me as well that 
surely the thing that we are missing is that Kell Brook has to prepare a hundred percent just to beat a low level opponent like Carson Jones and I'm like no 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 sorry but that's total nonsense every boxer should prepare a hundred percent to their ability in each fight every time that they fight because if they don't history tells us they look fucking shit look at Rick and Dial versus Nonito Dene he had an awful training camp barely made weight and what happened he lost the fight Hay versus Ruiz uh, Hay didn't come in in great shape didn't have the sparring and what happened he didn't look spectacular didn't look in good shape David Price versus Tony Thompson didn't have the sparring underestimated his opponent and didn't tactically prepare ended up losing the fight Golovkin versus Rosado didn't have a good camp uh, got illnesses in training you know didn't look good in the actual fight and came in very fleshy you know another thing that's come down to how he performed on the night maybe nutrition wasn't a good thing there Rosado versus um, Jay Leon Love Jay Leon Love didn't have a good training camp um, issues outside of boxing affected him uh, barely made weight went away used to diuretic just to make weight uh, what else did he do yeah he lost the fight put it like that and he he got a robbery and after he failed his drug test had it called a no contest so all of that suggests that you have to train 100% just to get anything out of every single fight if you don't train 100% you deserve to lose you understand and Carson Jones is not training in my opinion to 100% of his ability because he's putting into his body low quality crap so he it, he can't be training to 100% of his ability but going into the attributes the attributes of each fighter power neither fighter is a big power puncher in this fight if I had to pick one I would say Kell Brook to have an edge but he himself cannot finish or close the show Carson Jones also cannot finish or close the show because he had a pretty defenseless and shattered Kell Brook ready to go since the 8th or ninth round in the first fight and he couldn't close the show and also managed to shift two or, um, a round or two to Kell Brook to allow him to win think about it stamina is going to be Kells all day because he's got better better nutrition you know it's also at the catch weight and it's not he doesn't, he doesn't even have to fight the 12 rounds he only has to fight 10 rounds I don't think that Carson Jones this will suit him the 10 round fight because he'll have to fight the full 12 rounds in order to get the decision you understand um, last time he only fought 6 rounds he won't be able to do it again where he only fights 5 rounds half the fight because if he loses the first 4 or 5 rounds he's, he's opening himself up to get robbed or he, he could just you know maybe Kelbrook won't tie himself out this time you know maybe Carson Jones will come out and you know try and win the first 4 rounds straight away and tire himself out and then he could end up getting stopped who knows you see the thing about it is the stamina will be with Kel and I just don't see Carson Jones doing anything in this fight even though it's a 10 round fight the three factors I'm, I'm um, basing my prediction on are that it is a catch weight which will suit Kel 10 round fight which Kel you know which suits Kel over Carson Jones and if and, and if Kel if Carson Jones fight anything like the last fight it will suit Kel Brook and the third one is Carson Jones has awful nutrition so in other words Kel Brook to win a wide decision because he cannot finish the show and knock out Carson Jones 